Are you ready to see some of the world's most demanding environments? Then let's visualize the massive Sahara Desert and its terrifying new discoveries with its vast sand dunes and large stretches of scorching land. The Sahara Desert is the most significant hot desert in the world and the third largest desert worldwide behind Antarctica and the Arctic's cold desert. The Sahara is one of the roughest ecosystems on Earth, comprising about a third of the African continent and encompassing 3.6 million square miles, an area roughly the size of the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska. Sahara's borders include the Mediterranean Sea to the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, the Red Sea to the east, and the Sahel Savannah to the south. The vast desert stretches over 10 nations, including Egypt, Libya, Mali, Algeria, Chad, Mauritania, Sudan, Morocco, Niger, and Tanzania. The Sahara was green once upon a time. Hippos and giraffes roamed the numerous lakes, while a significant portion of the human population hunted fish for food along the lake shorelines. Then, between 11,000 and 4,000 years ago, the humid African era, often known as the Green Sahara, occurred. The vegetation of the Sahara was extraordinarily diversified, and it included species that are frequently found on the fringes of today's rainforest. The desert-adapted plants substantially get more rainfall throughout the northern two-thirds of Africa than it does now. Hunter-gatherers appear to have thrived in this highly productive and predictable habitat. These circumstances contrast sharply with the contemporary climate in Northern Africa. Northern Africa is now one of the driest places on the planet, home to the Sahara Desert, the world's biggest scorching desert. This formerly wet and tropical region is now an arid stretch of land where it's not unusual to go a year without rain in certain parts. People swimming in lakes found in temperate environments are depicted in cave drawings in the Egyptian Sahara. But now, in contrast to the cave paintings, Sahara has transformed into one of the driest spots on Earth. The solution lies in the Arctic and northern high-altitude climates. But first, let's turn back in time to 5,500 years ago, when northern Africa was humid and tropical. This period spans between 11,500 to 5,500 years ago and is known as the Humid African Period. As you may have imagined, Northern Africa was a pretty nice area to live in. However, some 5,500 years ago, the climate in Northern Africa abruptly changed, causing rapid acidification of the region. What was once a tropical, rainy, and thriving ecosystem became the arid desert that we witness today. The colder temperatures in the north decreased the high altitude equatorial easterly jet, a chain of fast winds which delivered moisture into Northern Africa regularly, resulting in this rapid change 5,500 years ago. The African easterly jet intensified as the tropical easterly jet weakened, indirectly reducing rainfall across Northern Africa. This tail was deconstructed using leaf waxes, where the researchers examined deuterium isotopes within the plants to provide a proxy for rainfall in the area. Plants keep track of how much rain they get in their cells, changing the isotope ratios of specific elements in response to regional climatic conditions. It is a typical method used by geologists to recreate historical climatic conditions. What's fascinating is that the cooling in the northern latitudes was very little compared to the hundreds of thousands of years of interglacial cycles that the globe has gone through. It suggests that small changes in the average temperature of high northern latitudes might have a light deviation in North Africa, turning on and off the climatic conditions. Given the recent warming of the Earth, particularly at high latitudes, it will be intriguing to watch if Northern Africa transitions to a more tropical and humid climate again at some point. While historical evidence shows that this is likely if global warming continues, the process might take hundreds of years, and the speed at which the tipping point would occur is unknown. While this may appear to be a relatively better consequence of global warming, it's vital to remember that rainfall is limited worldwide. One would anticipate another location to become much drier if one were to significantly become wetter. It might result in large-scale migrations from places with less rainfall to areas with higher rainfall. Paleontologists uncovered the remnants of Machimosaurus rex, one of the largest crocodiles ever unearthed in 2014. This ancient crocodile was double the size of any modern crocodile. It would have been roughly 9.8 meters long and weighed 993 kilos. The fossil was discovered in Tanzania on the Sahara Desert's edge. 
The find is remarkable, not just because of its size, but also because these crocodiles were thought to have died out during a catastrophic extinction between the Jurassic and Cretaceous eras. The finding, which occurred 150 million years ago, implies that the extinction catastrophe was not as extensive as some paleontologists imagine. The Valley of the Legged Whales is a paleontological site southwest of Cairo, Egypt. In 2005, it was classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The first whale bones were discovered in 1902 after hundreds of magnificent fossils had been uncovered in the vicinity. At first, the location drew little attention because it was difficult to reach. But that all changed in the 1980s when four-wheeled cars became more widely available. The enormous skeleton discovered was 21 meters in length and had well-developed five-finger flippers on the forelimbs and the existence of rear limb. Until that point, toes were not seen in any other prehistoric region. Hundreds of other aquatic animals, including crocodiles, turtles, sharks, and rays have also been discovered. In addition to that, some fossils are so well preserved that the contents of their stomachs are still visible. As a result, scientists can reconstruct the surrounding environmental and biological conditions of the period thanks to the quality and quantity of the remains. The Rishat Formation, sometimes known as the Eye of the Sahara, is located in the primarily isolated desert of northern Mauritania. Since its complete discovery in 1965, the Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Rishat Formation, has enthralled scientists. However, centuries have passed since its discovery by locals, and ideas abound about how the construction, which measures 25 miles in circumference with two concentric rings, came to be. Scientists think they possess a good understanding of how the structure came to be. NASA astronauts on board the Gemini 4 mission first found the Eye of the Sahara in 1965. They were hunting for suspected meteor impact craters, and this was one location that had struck their eye. While the building had technically been identified earlier with the discovery of Homo erectus bones and the adjacent site of Mauritanian settlement called Orduan, the astronauts were the first to see it in its entirety, since it is too enormous to visit from the ground. Scientists first thought the spot was a crater created by a meteorite strike. However, scientists could not locate any melted rock at the location, which would have formed due to the heat developed by the supposed impact, indicating that the chance of this being a crater was minimal. Scientists have proposed a different idea for the formation of the Sahara's eye. They believe that the structure developed roughly 100 million years ago, when tectonic plates shifted because of Pangaea's disintegration, causing molten rock to rise to the top. However, it did not instantly breach the surface, producing a bulge or dome to emerge on the Earth's surface. It caused fault lines to form in the area and transformed the limestone that was previously present into a kind of rock known as brescia which is still present today. Aren't these discoveries incredible? If you enjoyed watching this, smash that like button and subscribe to help us stay motivated. Also, feel free to jump in with your ideas on the Sahara, its findings, and anything else we may have overlooked in the comments. Check out this channel for more awesome clips like this. Thank you for watching and show your support to me by turning on that notification icon to see more. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you next time.